So um, this is U similar right triangles, and this is one of the harder sections in Chapter 7, um, so I'm going to take it kind of slow. Um, you can see there's a lot to write down here, um, so I'm going to take my time, okay? So first right here we have this right triangle ACB, and you can kind of see there I have my right angle. And what's interesting about right triangles is if you take the hypotenuse, which would be AB here, and you draw a altitude, which would be up to point C, what you get is you end up with three triangles. You end up with a smaller right triangle here and a medium-sized right triangle there, okay? And what's interesting is that all three of them are similar. So this kind of goes back to chapter six where we're dealing with similar triangles. Uh, but these are similar right triangles, right? So basically what I did was I redrew all three right triangles and I redrew them in the same order so that they're all facing the same way and what I did was I wrote my long leg and my short leg. And the reason I did that is so that I know that my long legs are all in the same spots and all my short legs are all in the same spots. And they're all facing the same way, so my hypotenuse is over here on the left. And if I do that, I can see that I have similar right triangles. I have triangle ACB is similar to triangle ADC, which is also similar to triangle CDB. Okay? So the problems are going to look like this. You're going to see one triangle. Uh, this problem is saying identify similar triangles and find x. So first, right off the bat, I'm going to draw my three triangles. So I'm going to redraw triangle ACB. And I know that this is 100. And I don't know these two sides, so I'm just going to leave those blank. But I do know um, that I also have this other triangle here. And the hard part is identifying the long legs and the short legs, okay? But I can tell here that if this one's 64, this one's going to be, um, what is that? It's going to be 46. Nope, sorry, 36. So, because this is 100 and this is 64, this must be 36, okay? So what I can tell here is that this is my bigger triangle, okay? And if this is my bigger triangle, the altitude is always going to be the short leg for my medium-sized triangle. So if this is my medium-sized triangle, I'm going to make sure that AC is my long leg, which makes CB my short leg. Okay? And if that's true, my altitude for my medium-sized triangle, since it's bigger than this one here, right? 64 is larger than 36. If this is my medium-sized triangle, the altitude must be my short leg. So I'm going to put my X here and my 64 here. I don't know what the altitude is because that would be AC. Okay? And again, this is um, triangle ADC. Okay? And then again, I have another small triangle. But again, I want my long leg here. And my long leg for this one is always going to be, <clears throat> excuse me, it's always going to be the altitude. So the altitude is always going to be um, the long leg for the small triangle and the short leg for the medium triangle. So that's the best way to remember it. I know I didn't write it down, but I would highly suggest writing that down. When you cut your triangle and you make three triangles, the altitude is the short leg for the big triangle of the two, or basically the medium-sized triangle and it's the long leg for the small triangle, okay? So long leg there, small leg is 36. And again, if this is ADC, this has now become CDB. So identify similar triangles and find X. Well, now that I have them all lined up perfectly, now I can write my similarity statement. So I'm gonna say triangle ACB is similar to triangle ADC, excuse me, which is similar to triangle CDB, okay? But I also have to find X. So finding X is basically just like we did in chapter six, we're gonna use proportions. So I need to look for two sides that I have where I only use X once. And what I see here is I have both my long leg and my short leg here I don't have my long leg and my short leg there. Um, let's see, I have a hypotenuse here and I do not have the hypotenuse there. 
So, what can I do? Well, I can use um, the geometric mean, right? I have 64x and x over 36. So I'm going to say 64 over x is equal to, that's long leg over short leg, is equal to this long leg over this short leg. And you're going to get some pretty big mean numbers here. Um, but let's give it a shot. So I got my calculator here. Um, I get x squared is equal to 64 times 36. And I get 2304. And then, of course, I always want to take the square root of that. So let's take the square root of the answer. And I get x equals 48. So some of these are going to work out real nice like this one did. Um, but the hardest, hardest part is always setting up your triangles in the right order. And remember, like I said, you have three triangles. You have a big triangle, you have a medium-sized triangle, and you have a small triangle. And the altitude that you draw will always be the long leg, sorry, will always be the short leg for the medium-sized triangle, and will always be the long leg of the small triangle. So. Let's take a look at what else we have. We have this one problem here. I'm only going to do two examples today. It says, tell whether the triangle is a right triangle and find the length of the altitude to the hypotenuse, if it is. So basically, we have a two-step problem here. Step one is we're going to determine if it's a right triangle. And we already know how to do that. All we have to do is use the Pythagorean theorem, right? So all I'm going to say is um, 12 squared plus 8 squared should be equal to 4 root 13, all of that squared. And remember, um, well, let's just do this side first. 12 squared is 144. 8 squared is 64. And I'm going to set that equal to this. And remember, when you square this, you don't mix the numbers inside and out. But a square undoes a square root. So basically, I'm squaring 4, which is 16 and then I'm going to get rid of the square root and multiply it times 13. Okay, so 144 plus 64. Let's do that real quick. I get 208. And this will only be a right triangle if this side equals 208 too, right? So 16 times 13. 208. So do I have a right triangle? Yes, I do have a right triangle. Now that I know I have a right triangle, I can find the altitude of my hypotenuse, which is step two. I'm going to find the length of that altitude. So remember that the altitude is to the hypotenuse, which looks like this. And again, I'm going to have three triangles. So I'm going to redraw the big one, which isn't that hard. But the reason I redraw all three is because sometimes the numbers make it a little bit easier to see how they're similar. So there's my three numbers there. And again, I'm going to look at this big triangle and say, this is my long leg, right? And what did I say about the medium triangle? The altitude is always going to be the short leg. And this is my x. I don't know what that is. So my medium triangle, um, the altitude is my short leg. My long leg is, I don't know, it's going to be some piece of this, but I don't know what it is. And the hypotenuse is... 12. Then I draw my small triangle. And again, that's this triangle here, so I know the hypotenuse is 8. But again, I have to remember that the altitude is always going to be the long leg of the small triangle. So if it's the long leg, my x should be here. Okay. So again, now I need to look at my three triangles and see where I can make a proportion. Um, I see that I have the hypotenuse of all three. And I have the hypotenuse and the short leg of this one and this one. Um, I could also compare the small one with this one because I have the hypotenuses there and I have the long legs there. I'm going to go ahead and compare this one and this one. Okay, so if I do that, I'm going to say the hypotenuse of the large one, 4 root 13, over the short leg, which is 8, is equal to and it's going to be equal to 12 over x because there's my hypotenuse and there's my my short leg okay 
So set up my proportion and then I solve. Um, when it comes to this problem, don't worry about your square roots. Just go ahead and plug it into your calculator and give me a decimal. Um, so real quick, before I even begin, I'm going to work that out into a decimal. So what's 4 times the square root of 13? I get 14.422. And just go ahead and leave it at three decimal spots. That'll be fine. But then what do I do here? I cross multiply, right? So if I cross multiply, I get 14.422x is equal to 96. And if I want to solve this, all I have to do is get x by itself or divide by 14.22. So let's do that real quick. Oops. So if I do that in my calculator, I get 96 divided by 14.22. Four two two, and I get x is equal to about six point six. I'm going to say five six. Okay, you're going to get decimals because of these square roots. Don't worry about simplifying them. Um, but mainly, what I'm concerned about is getting these triangles in the right order because that is the key to these problems. You have to be able to identify which is your long leg which is your short leg, and your hypotenuse of all three triangles. Once you get that down, you're pretty much set. Um, so that was example two. That's about as much as we're going to do from this section. Uh, we might talk a, little, talk a little bit more about the geometric mean later, but right now, um, this is it. If you have any questions, make sure that you write them down um, so we can go over them in class.